Get ready for spring with The Home Depot and bring bright, colorful energy inside with projects to make your whole home feel like spring. Like livening your living spaces with a fresh coat of Bare Premium Plus paint starting at $28.98 for durable coverage in fun, vibrant colors for your walls and ceilings. It's never too early to start the season. There's a project you can tackle to get your home ready for spring, inside and out, with The Home Depot. How doers get more done. In-store only, product varies by store, while supplies last. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, lo. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. All right. Our next guest has a fascinating story, a very challenging journey, but uh, so many successes along the way. Olympic gold medal winner, five-time All-Star who made two All-NBA first teams. He's been an MVP of the league, a Naismith Hall of Famer. What a story. Excited to talk to Spencer Haywood. What's going on, Spencer? Oh, man, thank you for having me. I was just hanging out with Shaq Fu this past week. Yeah, I seen you were at the ladies' basketball game. How how was that conversation with you and the big fella? Oh, it's always great because I was not only with him there, I was with him when he had his big fundraiser here at the in Las Vegas at the um, MGM, which was a great show, great show. Yeah, you guys are bo- both have houses now in Las Vegas, so you're like neighbors. Hello. <laughs> we're neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, I was reading your story, and it comes from very humble beginnings. You were born into slavery, your first memories as a, a young man working in the cotton fields. Talk about your first memories as, as a child and how that prepared you for life. Well, how it prepared me for life was I was born in this, this town called Silver City, Mississippi. And Silver City, Mississippi, it's not really... It was just a town. Uh, so most folks hear it and said, oh, it's silver there, or it's a city. No, it was neither. <laughs> it was just cotton fields and hard work. And what it taught me is that if you want to accomplish your goals, you can make anything happen. So I started out in the cotton field, picking cotton. And so by the time I was 10, I was picking 100 pounds uh, in the morning and 100 pounds in the afternoon. So I was at 200 pounds at 10. And I had taken on the challenge because I had five brothers who were in competition with all of everything we did was in competition. So I would start going out into the fields early when the dew was on the cotton, which meant that it was kind of wet and you could, you could get, uh, some nice pounds out of it if you, if you know if you can keep maintain your speed and your and your journey with it and it taught me about that work ethic you know getting up earlier get into the gym or, or get into the cotton field early and then uh you know just working real real hard i mean we, we worked from sun up to sun down it wasn't like you know here we go and we was we were only making uh 2 dollars a day so it was it was brutal work, but what it taught me again, and I didn't know until later, it was when I was picking cotton. I'm picking with both hands, and when I started playing basketball, I could use both hands. I had very delicate hands. I could because you're picking a cotton, you're picking it out of a thorn, and you have to be very careful because you don't want to tear up your hand. So it was just it was a good 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 thing, and then. You know, before people were lifting weights and all of that, I was lifting cotton. So my body was built like a like a real athlete as a as a young man. As you know, when I was fifteen, I got to Detroit. I mean, everybody was like, "This guy looks young, but his body looks old, looks mature." <laughs> and so it came around because of the cotton field. And I finally got to Detroit. I was like, "Wow!" They were saying, "My God, you know what?" We're going to have a long practice today, and it's going to be two and a half hours. That ain't, that ain't nothing for you. That was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was like, oh, my God, you're talking two and a half hours. 
So, Spencer, to keep following the journey, you go from Mississippi to Detroit, where your high school basketball coach somehow adopts you. Uh, that's an interesting yes, story. My high school coach, Will Robinson. What happened was I came up to Detroit and I came up from Bowling Green State University, where my oldest brother was playing with Bowling Green. So I came up to Detroit and I played at this pickup games and it was Crunk uh, Outdoor Course. I know most folks relate to Crunk as the boxing uh, ring because of Tommy Hearns and all of the other great fighters who came out of Crunk Gym. But on the outside, they had basketball courts and so on. So I came up and I wanted to play against these uh, high school uh, all-stars from the state of Michigan. So I played against them. I had 27 points, 15 rebounds, I think. And... And everybody was unbelievable. Who is this kid? What is he doing? So I had no place to stay. And I had nobody to look after me because my brother had to go back to the university. And so Will Robinson, who was the first black coach in the NCAA Division I history, saw me and he started tracking me. And then he allowed me to play against the college guys, Cassie Russell, ben, Bill Barton, uh, all of the guys from the University of Michigan and Michigan State, Western Michigan. And then we played against the, the Pistons, Dave Bing. So let, let me, I'll take care of the young boy. And he told my brother, go on back to Bowling Green. So I started hanging out with those guys just out of basketball curiosity. And Will Robinson said, oh, my God, I got what I've been looking for. I, and he was the coach. He said, he was a high school coach at Persian High School. He said, oh, my God, I got what I, I've been looking for for all of these years because you had Mel Daniels, who played in the NBA, Ira Hodge, just a number of players, Big Daddy Lipskin for the Baltimore Colts. He just had a number of players in, in, in professional. And he said to me and to the, the, to the guys around us on the team, he said, whoa, buddy, we've been playing with mules. <laughs> now we got a horse. We're going to ride this SOB all the way to the Class A state championship. And so we broke out into a practice at the high school, at Persian High School in Detroit. We finished practice, and I started running on the track. And then I ran outside and started shooting on the outdoor basket. And Will Robinson was totally fascinated because I flashed back again when we were talking earlier about – Mississippi in that cotton field. So that cotton field, as bad as it was, it made me a great athlete and a great basketball player, the moral of the story. And so we did win the Class A state championship for the city of Detroit. The first time in 35 years that a Class A state uh, championship was won by a team from the city of Detroit. So that was the first round. Listen up. I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up! Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes. Now let's go win the sick playoffs! Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in, in a few minutes. Hm, Instacart for the win. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Now, that's just the beginning of, of your story because there's so many things to talk to our guest here, Spencer Haywood, about uh, heading from the cotton fields to the hardwood, going to college, and then being uh, adopted by your, your coach. Something about your birth certificate as well. They were trying to track it down. Well, What's that story? <laughs> well, that story was uh, all of a sudden we were there. 1968 Olympics were coming up. And so Kareem boycotted, Alvin Hayes and Wes Unsell signed a pro contract uh, before they went to the trial. So that eliminated them because 
back in the days of 1968 and so forth, you had to be an, a strict amateur player. And so that, that eliminated him. So Jerry Tarkanian, who was the coach at UNLV, who was then a junior college coach, who saw me play at Trinidad State Junior College, said, we got the best player in the country. We want to bring him down to Albuquerque for the trials. And so they put together this junior college team, and here we go off to <laughs> to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Down there, it was like Pete Maravich averaging 44 a game. Rick Mount from Purdue averaging 39 a game. Calvin Murphy from Niagara averaging 33 a game. Tom Borwinkle, dominant. Dan Issel, oh, just Jim full of players, just players. And so uh, all of a sudden, we had the trials, and I did really well there. And and everybody was saying, how can we justify taking an 18-year-old freshman on this team? And so I played so well that they said, oh, I guess it's okay. Yeah, we'll find There's a way. Nothing wrong. <laughs> we had nothing, nothing wrong in the bylaws that says we can't take a freshman. We just never did it before. And so they chose me to play, and they cut all of my, my guys that I thought was I was going to be playing with. Pete Maravich got cut. Uh, Rick Mount got cut. Tom Bowinkle, Dan, and so all of these players got cut. And so they put the weight on me and said, this kid is going to lead us to the gold medal and make sure you have your birth certificate in the box because we're going to go out and get the passports in a group tomorrow. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to stop me from going to the Olympics. I don't have a, I don't have a birth certificate. So we called my mom in Silver City, Mississippi. Sure, baby, I got a passport right here. It's <laughs> written in my Bible on the John 21. And they were like, that's the only... <laughs> <laughs> I was born by a midwife. You got to remember, I'm in the country. You know, I'm a country boy. So, <laughs> so they so just they wrote it right in your mother's Bible, your birth certificate. Yes. Amazing. The midwife. And so, uh, so the Jackson... Uh, Title statistic, they created a birth certificate, got my birth certificate, went off to Russia, to Yugoslavia, came back to play the scrimmage the Knicks in New York at Madison Square Garden, and then the next stop was into Cincinnati to scrimmage with, against Oscar Robertson and that great group, and then on down to Mexico City where uh, the first two guys I met over there would had those caps on and they had their hats laying to the side. What's up, country boy? And I was like, who are these guys? And it was John Carlos and Tommy Smith because they were the man. They were the men on campus there <laughs> in the 68 Olympics. And so here we are. And so me and George Foreman, because, you know, all of us had to be in the same compound. And so <laughs> we were called in the compound, but it's, a, a, you know, a village, Olympic village. So... We were just like stupid walking around eating food and just being happy. And those guys, you got to stand up for something, brother. I'll fall for anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> that was the, the movement afloat, you know, the black movement and all. So we would just wanted to play. And so you go through all of that. And here I am on the podium, getting my gold medal, put on my neck, and they tell it. Everybody, the, the announcer, he has broke the scoring record. He's broken the rebound record and the field goal percentage record. And he put this gold medal on my neck. And I was like, oh, my God, it flashed back on me like four years before. I was a slave in Mississippi. Wow. And now here I am, a, a champion and a gold medalist, medalist and a hero Amazing. In America. Amazing, amazing, truly amazing. So I just stood there crying, and Bill Hosked and JoJo White, they just was like, come on, young boy, you can't, you were old during the playing. Why now you acting like a kid? <laughs> <laughs> the emotions uh, took hold. Now that record, that record that you had in the Olympics held for many, many years, decades, until for, recently, yeah, for KD. Years. KD was the one to break that record. Have you had a conversation with him about that? Yes, I always. Uh, yeah. Well, we also are Sonics, too. Right? He don't like to admit that. Yeah. But anyway, 
I, I tell him all the time, I said, KD, you wouldn't have broken this record if you, if you didn't have three-point shooting and you got there at age 27 and he look at me, you always got to make a dig. <laughs> yeah. You always got to make a dig. I wouldn't call it a dig, though, Spencer. I would just call it the truth. I mean, right? I know, I know, but, you know, I can't, <laughs> I can't beat the young guys up. But that's my guy. KD is my guy. He loves me. He, nobody loves me like Shaq, but KD is right behind him, him and Kevin Garnett. An- another guy, guy, though, Spencer, right. who should love you, especially since he passed Kareem on the all-time leading scorers list, is LeBron James. Because hadn't you stood up to the NBA all the way to the Supreme Court to fight for your right to play basketball? LeBron James, no question about it, at this point, he wouldn't have passed Kareem, can you explain what you did in 1971 that changed the game of basketball forever and has ultimately helped make King James the king of the NBA at this point? Well, what I did in 1971, I sued the NBA for the rights to play because I had left the ABA as the MVP and the rookie of the year, the MVP of the All-Star game. I was 20 years old and... And the NBA said, you cannot come into the NBA until your, until four years after your high school class had graduated. And they made an example out of it by Wilt Chamberlain. When Wilt Chamberlain left, listen, Spencer, when Wilt Chamberlain left Kansas University, he went to the Globetrotters for a year. And then he came into the NBA. We would like for you to do something like that. We want you to go to Belgium and come back because I couldn't go back to the ABA. The ABA said, no, we want you back. But they had did such harsh, horrible things to me and my agent that I was like turned off by that whole idea. And so I said, I wanted to play Sam Schumann said, I- I'm going to play him. He was the owner of the Seattle Supersonics. So we filed suit to play. And the first, before we started a uh, 10 game injunction was placed upon me by the NBA attorneys, and I sat for the first 10 days. Then I got a 10-day injunction to play. And then they were like announced me like, hello, ladies and gentlemen, we have an illegal player on the floor, number 24. This game is being played under protest. Wow. <laughs> so I played So I played the <laughs> next 10, games, 10 days, and then they would get another injunction. And then I would sit again. Then I would get another injunction again. Then we'd go through the whole process over and over. And then we finally, it's got, it is getting a little bit rougher now because it's, we didn't pass the, the district courts. And now we're moving into the Supreme Court. So they said, we're going to break him. So we go into Cincinnati, and the injunction that night was that we got an injunction against Haywood, and he must be off the grounds in which this arena sat on. So they put me out into the snow. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm out there in the snow and stuff like that. Nothing, anything differently than I had experienced in Mississippi. Now, you know, I was well, well suited for this journey. And then when we get to Chicago to play the Chicago Bulls, uh, Chet Walker is supposed to be down warming up and looking down at the other end at me. And he said he hurt his ankle, and the Chicago Bulls sued me the next morning for six hundred thousand dollars. This that's crazy. I know, but just the battle, you know, because you had the NC two A who was like hanging over the NBA and doing giving them guidelines and what to do because they felt that that was the end of the NIL, the NC two A as we know it, because players are gonna be wanting to get paid. We're gonna have players leaving college early like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. So we're gonna have these guys leaving. It's going to destroy the game. That's what that's what was told. <laughs> and so we get all the way to the Supreme Court and I won the case seven to two and that's how I won that case. And from there we have like created uh, over $60 billion in players' salary because you had all of the players, Bob McAdoo, Jim Jones, all those players started leaving after one year of college. Then we had some that left after two, and I had left college after two years. And so a guy like LeBron James, who did not go to college, he got four years extra. 
And so those four years of extra t- of playing time in the NBA enabled him to pass Supreme, su- surpass Kareem by 8,487 points or something like that. And that's how he broke the record with Kareem. And plus, he's about $200 million richer because he didn't spend the time in college. Well, hopefully he's bought you a meal or two, you know, the king. No, he don't even speak to me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> He did, he did a nice story. He did a nice story called, um, what, did, what did LeBron did? Our biggest bath event of the year has arrived online at the Home Depot. Right now, get up to 40% off select bath online, plus free delivery on a wide selection of on-trend bath products from quality brands like Home Decorators Collection. Personalizing your bathroom has never been easier with online savings from the Home Depot. Get started on your next bathroom project today with our lowest bath prices of the year at homedepot.com. How doers get more done. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Uh, he did a nice story on uh, about me on Showtime. But LeBron has been really supportive. He's a good young man. And in fact, because they never put my name on my ruling, they have always called it the hardship, early entry, one and done, and some else, tiddlywinks. But they never put the ruling as the Spencer Haywood rule, the same as they have have done with the Larry Bird rule and the Oscar Robinson rule. But my rule is different, and they have not put my name on my rule. So the players don't really know. They really don't know. And it's like uh, Ron DeSantis of, of uh, Florida. <laughs> we don't want you to know nothing about this guy. So they're beginning to know, and once they know, then it's it's like Shaq had this great story about it. I, I, shall I tell you? Yes, please. Okay. We were like in – he was playing, I think, in his first or second year as an all-star in – Salt Lake City. So I go running up to Shaq. Hey, man, do you know who I am? I'm Spencer <laughs> Haywood, bro. I'm the guy who helped made it possible so you leave school early. What do you think about this, bro? And he looked at me. This is a young dude. And I was this old dude with a little anger in me. <laughs> he said, oh, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I see him, I don't care where we are, and I'd be trying to duck like, oh, God, here comes Shaq. <laughs> and he comes and tells the story to all people. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm so embarrassed. I was like, oh God. <laughs> but he what he did in that in that in that particular episode in my life, he showed me that you can't take this stuff that serious. <laughs> and so I've been loose ever since. So I don't uh bother the players like that. I do it I do tell them though. Now, this sounds like a victory. You know, you win in the Supreme Court. You, you now make this rule available for players to not have to wait to get to the money. But I guess mm-hmm. it didn't turn out great for everybody because I heard that you would have bottles thrown at you and uh, fans would yell things at you and it was common for them to not allow you to play. I mean, is that true, that, that people were angry at you because of this? Yeah, because see, you had each university had their, their people out doing that case too as well and those were the people and also there was a lot of misinformation going out back then you know about this is destroying college basketball this is destroying the nba we're going to be permeated with young black men coming into the nba that was one of the issues the second issue is why the players association would not allow me to be a member was that he they had told the players the older players, this this guy is tearing up this rule, so all of these young guys are going to come in next year, and they're going to push you out of your out in the street. And so it was just so much friction and so much. I was like living in a terror state. But again, back to Mississippi, where I lived in a terror state. This was not a big deal. 
So yeah, it was it was brutal. It was a brutal battle. Man, and then you, you have lived patient. some kind of life, Spencer. Man, what a story. <laughs> So after all of that, you know, I get out here and I play all of my years and I get I get to, you know, like all pro, uh, first team, uh, all pro, uh, all-star games. And they told me later on that there was no way I was going to, if I wasn't an all pro player, which was in the top 10, I wasn't going to be on an all-star team because there's punishment for what you have done, son. And not only that, but the league also put me down as a second round draft pick once I had played in the ABA, <laughs> played in the NBA, went to the Supreme Court, and they said, well, you were drafted by Buffalo in the second round. Just That is on my record. It's just a lot of brutal stuff that needs to, need to be corrected. So in time, but I played all of those years, and then I get to L.A. We got like Magic Johnson, rookie year. Woo-wee! He can make making passes at us all in enthusiastic norm nixon at the left left guard uh jamal wilkes at the small forward spencer hayward at the big forward kareem abdujabar in the center we had a dynamite team we had jim jones uh, uh michael cooper all those guys coming off the bench and i get high i was like what the fuck you get <laughs> you you got into the cocaine right yeah i got into the cocaine that year and i didn't know what i was getting into and it just hit me and tore me apart, man. And so that was that's my real regret in basketball that I, I, I took that year and screwed up. And so we went on our 40th anniversary, I guess it was, this year. The, the Lakers, me, Magic, uh, all of us. We went to Hawaii and Magic set it up and, and uh, Jenny Buzz as well as um, Pat Riley. So we get over there, and these guys are beating me up like, if you had no guard high, we would have had seven in a row. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. But it was just fun. It was just, they were loosening up because I had lost my wife that year, and and they were showing me the love. And, and, and from that, so all of the players that are current and the old heads have been really – wrapping their arms around me and showing me the love. And so from the winning time on HBO, which is the show that's on now, uh, big producers came and said, hey, I think we want to do your story because your story is more in-depth than anything we've seen in sports. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. And so it's Lionsgate and it's... uh, Mark Cannon is one of the producers. Vassal Bentford is the second producer. And my agent for the project is Tobias Harris' dad, Terrell Harris. So now we have a movie being done of my life. And it's going to be so exciting. It's going to be really great because not only that portion of my life, but I was also married to Iman, the fashion model, who was the number one model. Oh, she's in beautiful. Gosh, gorgeous. Yeah, so we were married. Yeah, so we were married for 12 years. So. Uh, the whole lifestyle of the fashion world and everything collided. And nowadays I see these guys uh, have their wives and their girlfriends and saying, I'm the first. I'm like, boy, please. Yeah, yeah you better do your I'm research, man. You better know your history. Better your you better check the cover of Essence magazine. You know, come on now. Thank you. <laughs> I've seen, I seen that cover. I've seen you. Okay, okay. Talk that talk. So, so I'm curious. Uh, she married uh, David Bowie, as I don't know how many she people know David that. Bowie. Well, how do you feel when you hear "Let's Dance"? Do you get up and dance? Or are you a fan of David I Bowie? Dance. You had to be a little pissed yes, off. We used to hang out together. Come on. Seriously, no, no jealousy at all. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because I was married before she married him. I had married my wife Linda, and I had two more daughters. And then Iman was so cool with everything that she allowed me to raise our daughter, our oldest, my oldest daughter from Iman, with my other girls in Michigan. And so it was just a big old round family, you know. We were just, we were new at all of this because we were just trying to make sure we did the right things for, for our daughter and for our, all of our relationships. So when David comes to town, I would go catch his music and, you know, well, so, that's good. That's so good to hear. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and, and when I needed a favor with my daughter, he did some wonderful things for me and looked after my, my oldest daughter, uh, Zuleika, once she left Michigan State. I don't know what they do to those kids up in Michigan State because you got magic and all those crazy people. And my sister's kind of nuts. So yeah, she's, she's a Sparty. That's what happens when you become a that's Sparty. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> you, you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm from the University of Detroit. We always throw throw slugs at Michigan State and Michigan. So we're just a poor school at, in the city. <laughs> All right, so there we were, cruising through the new open-air zoo, when I realized that the park was closing in like 15 minutes. Luckily, we were in my Nissan Rogue. With its powerful VC turbo engine, well, we had time to see all the animals. Whoa! (laughs) And outrun a few! Drive the Nissan Rogue. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I, I know we've been on for a while, Spencer, and, and we're running low on time here. I, I appreciate mm-hmm. your time, and, and what a great story, and uh, I can't wait till the movie comes out. But I do want to ask you about Winning Time, the series. I know that a lot of it was played up for, for Hollywood, but the way they depicted you in the series is that you got kicked off the team like right in the middle of the NBA Finals. Is, is that true? One game, two games to go. Nuts. What were those nights like when they're playing in the NBA championship? You were just on the team days ago, and now and now you're not. That's now had to be not. dark days. It was dark, dark days, and 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 the, the the winning time depict what really, really, really happened with me. So everybody, that was another thing when we got together in Hawaii this year. They were like, "Why are you admitting to all of this stuff, Smith?" We know you were crazy. <laughs> These are the players. And I said, oh, man, I'm going to take care of you guys. That was never the way I was. This was never the way I was. And I said, hey, Kareem, what about you? Uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go walk the beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, it was a good so, series. I mean, I don't know how much of it was, it was uh, true, but well, it was my, put I'm together very saying, well. I'm saying in my instance, it was great. It was done to perfection. <laughs> Wood Harris played a, uh, did a great job with me. I know in Jim Chone's situation, I talked with Jim. Jim said it was great. They, they played me straight up. Uh, Norm Nixon saying, well, they played me straight up. And in fact, there was his son who played Norm Nixon is Devontae Mich- uh, Now, What about Jerry West? He seemed to be the most upset. When you watched the Jerry West portrayal, how far off was it? Or was it close? Did he, what, did that, was he- a far, that was a little bit far off for Jerry. Because Jerry was not that character. Yeah, he... he, he somebody had I've met him a couple of times. He seemed very even keel. In the show, he seemed even like a loose Jill, cannon. Good man, a righteous brother. But, you know, somebody uh, <laughs> dapped him up a little bit. That's that's Hollywood uh, for that's you. Jerry, that's Hollywood for you, you know? All right, I'll, I'll leave you with this. There's a lot of talk about who the greatest player of all time is, and now hearing your story, I think your name needs to be thrown in the mix when you talk about Olympic gold, you talk about high school championships, you talk about uh, being born into, into slavery and fighting for players' rights. I mean, it is a true amazing story. A lot of people, of course, bring up Michael Jordan. People now from this younger generation say, LeBron James, you'll get a few Kobe's out there. I feel like there should be more mentions of Kareem and the way he won at all levels of basketball. But for you, who is the greatest basketball player of all time? Well, now you saying, I'm going to take a minute to just explain that Kobe, LeBron, Michael, all those other GOATs, uh, under the Spencer Haywood rules. So when you put the first one in there, no, I won't. I won't talk. About it. But Kareem is far is probably the best at what what it is. But you can't promote him because sometimes Kareem is moody and different things. So 
Uh, I'm going to have to go with Jordan because he changed the game. He did so much. He brought in the, the shoe thing, and we didn't get into the Nike deal that I blew up. <laughs> Is that going to be in the movie? The original, yes. I was the original Nike player, and my guy couldn't figure out how to get uh, his 10% out, so he sold my stock back. So right now I'm down $2.1 billion. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, you'd be sitting but pretty. If, you, if Yeah, that is, that is life. Well, uh, you seem to be I'm doing all right after all these years, though, I'm Spencer. doing all right after all these years. But, you know, I was laughing with Kareem and Julius Irvin at the All-Star game, and people were asking, what, what happened to your, your Nike deal? I said, I'll tell you one thing. If I had got that money, I probably wouldn't be sitting here because I probably <laughs> would be dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, sometimes you probably would have done more, much, much more cocaine, I'm sure. Yes, of course. So, you know, I have 39 years of sobriety so for your audience. Don't, uh, oh, boy, he's still hitting them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who knows what they're putting in that stuff nowadays either? It's killing oh, people. So God. stay away Maybe, from it, kids. Oh, God. Stay away from it. Fentanyl, everything. Ooh. It's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous world. Well, Spencer, God bless you, man, and thank you for telling your story here on our show. I'm going to be sure to let Shaq know that you know he's forty million dollars richer thanks to Spencer, and he better not forget it. No, no, he's eighty. <laughs> oh, he's eighty. Okay, I want to he get the number. Two, he got two. He got two years. <laughs> Remember, he left after two years of college. Yes, he did. <laughs> And, and got paid for sure. Well, Spencer, it's been hey. it's been great chatting with you. I look forward to running into you. Maybe I'll see you at this year's NBA All Star. And uh, thank you for being so generous I with your time. Will be at the All Star game as well as if you come out for the play in tournament here, the mid season tournament, I'll be up there as well. And then one more thing for the audience, if you got one second. Yes. The All Star game that is being played in the All Star game is played in in, in Indiana. I was the first player to win the MVP in an all-star game in Indiana in 1970. And they know how to shoot in Indiana. They do. They, they appreciate yes. their basketball in that state. I know that. So I'm going to be there, and it's all praises. Thank you so much for having me, and Shaq Fu. Yes, thank you. We'll see you in Indy. Uh, Spencer Haywood, our guest, thank you so much for your time, and I can't wait to see the movie. Thank you. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.